Brian Kringen, uh, and this is my wife Joyce. We're the managing directors here at the Chapel in the Hills. The chapel was actually built as a home for uh, a radio program called Lutheran Vespers. It started way back in 1947 by a pastor in Sioux Falls named uh, Harry Gregerson, Pastor Harry Gregerson. It was one of the first uh, Lutheran radio programs on the air. And through the decades, it became popular and people wanted to come visit the home of Lutheran Vespers. But there really wasn't a home for Lutheran Vespers. And so that got the board of the radio program thinking, you know, well, maybe we should actually have a, a center, you know, a home for the radio program. A lot of the Lutherans in the upper Midwest, of course, uh, can trace their ancestry back to, uh, to Norway. And so they said, what, what's truly uniquely Norwegian that we could do? And that's when the idea came to, to model a stave church. Pastor Gregerson met uh, a banker out here by the name of Art Dahl. He was known for doing good philanthropic work for the city. And he said, Harry, I'll build your chapel. All I ask is that you dedicate it to my parents. We have the plaque that you see when you walk up to the chapel dedicated to Mr. Dahl's parents. So once the decision was made to do a church, then the next part of that was to contact the Norwegian government. And they weren't overly enthusiastic in the very beginning because this was taking a part of their culture and we were trying to do something here. So it was finally agreed upon if we did it as an exact replica. So they got the blueprints, um, they actually contracted a craftsman in Norway to do some of the carvings to truly try to make this an authentic piece of the Norwegian culture. Oregon Church was chosen as the church that they want to model because it was built about 1170 and it was one of the churches that remains in its most um, pristine form without changes being done to it, additions added on to it and things like that. They broke ground in, in June of 1968 but they really didn't get going until later in the summer of that same year. But it was all finished by July 6th, 1969, when they had the dedication. When visitors first arrive at the chapel, they're greeted by our volunteers at our visitor center, uh, which also serves as our gift shop. And that building is called a stabur, which literally means a storehouse in Norwegian. Our stabur is authentic. It was built in Norway. So once it was complete, they disassembled it, numbered all the, the parts, shipped it over here to Rapid City, and then during the same time they put it back together, almost like putting back together some, a Lincoln Log House. We also have a log cabin, which used to be an old gold miner's cabin out in the hills that was brought in and restored, and that holds um, many Scandinavian antiques. Um, and again, it's a chance for people to see what life was like during that time in history. The latest addition to Chapel Grounds is, is our prayer walk. Uh, that, that extends up oh, a couple hundred uh, yards behind the, the chapel for people that want to get away from it a little bit farther. There's benches up there and some statues that were donated to the chapel and Bible verses and it just, it's, it's become a very popular place for people to just get a little bit farther away from it and sit down and relax and prayer and meditate, whatever. It just, it's, it's, been a, it's been a great addition to the grounds here. Well, even though the chapel closes at the end of September, when the snow falls out of the chapel, it's a magical place. There's been a tradition on and off here at the chapel to, to decorate the chapel and the grounds for the Christmas season. We spotlight the chapel in amber lighting, which just kind of makes it glow up there. And uh, we also keep the chapel open on weekends during Advent, so for people who want to not only drive by and look at the lights, if they want to stop in the parking lot and go up and, and enjoy the inside that's decorated also for the Christmas season. There's music playing in there. And just, a, a, again, a nice nice place to try out your, your nighttime photos of the chapel and, and all sorts of activities you can do. Even before the, uh, the chapel was dedicated, uh, a couple came up and asked Pastor Gregerson if they could get married here at the chapel. We have, we have a newspaper article from the Rapid City Journal that records this, this first wedding and Pastor Gregerson is quoted as saying, well, the weddings will be the exception rather than the rule around here. Well, you can about imagine that didn't last very long and 50 years later, we're st it's still a very popular place to get married. We were married right behind us here on the west patio of the chapel and uh, when we retired from teaching, there was a management position open and they asked us if we'd like to come back and do this full time and so here we are, kind of come full circle. Today.
None of this would, would, would happen without our dedicated team of volunteers. We have close to 60 volunteers that help us here. And uh, they'll take shifts in the gift shop, they'll help us with the, the grounds and building maintenance. We have youth groups that will come in and help us. And without that, that spirit of volunteerism, this, this chapel would not, would not be able to, to stay open.